What's the best treatment for tinnitus from neck muscles? Today you will learn specific ways to get rid of or at least reduce your tinnitus from the neck. In a previous video I reviewed the clear criteria to know if your tinnitus is coming from your neck. You can see that video by checking the description or the info card up there. So how do we answer this question in an accurate way? At first it seems obvious. Just find the best neck treatment and you will have found the best tinnitus from your neck treatment. Well, let's challenge that thought for a moment. Does everyone who needs and benefits from neck treatment have tinnitus? No. What about this one? Are all neck conditions the same? No. Is there a single test or is there a single best neck treatment in all neck conditions? No. Fortunately, there are some very effective treatments for tinnitus caused by neck problems, and some of them are self-help treatments. Finding the best treatment for tinnitus caused by neck problems is a very difficult question to answer at this point for the research journey, but I'll escort you down the path of this journey a bit and give you a map, so to speak, at the end of this episode's journey so you can see clearly what is most useful for you and apply it to your tinnitus. Well, what do the reviewers of research say? A review or a meta-analysis surveys large volumes of research finds the research that is relevant to this specific condition and treatment, then checks to see if the remaining research is quality research. And finally, they summarize what treatment works most of the time for most of the people. That information can be very helpful, especially in a population where most of the people with a single symptom have the same cause. Now, there are many details that I went through when analyzing these reviews. I'll give you more specifics in the description below, but for the sake of time, let's see what they found. Here's a good, re here's a good review by Michaels in 2016. After excluding the studies that failed to meet their criteria, they were left with a measly six studies. Their conclusion? We can't make any recommendations because even the remaining studies were done differently. There were only six studies left, and those six didn't all study the same treatment. Now I'm starting to get discouraged. I knew this video title was too good to be true. Wait, wait, not so fast. The same study did say that despite these issues, it's noteworthy that all included studies showed positive treatment effects. Yes. They also mentioned some good takeaways. Specific to somatic tinnitus, Michael's review found that neck stabilizing and mobilizing exercises, adjustments of the neck, trigger point compression therapy, and a combination of stretching, posture exercises, and auricular or ear acupuncture each improves tinnitus severity. Now well, that's encouraging. In another study in 2017, Heider and Hoare did an excellent review of specifically somatic tinnitus treatments. They considered physical therapy, TMJ specific therapy, chiropractic, trigger point therapy combined with stretching, repetitive somatic modulation, TIN stimulation and medication or surgery. Only trigger point therapy and stretching and TINs at C2 or around the ear had consistent benefit that passed the standard of being well studied or at least had studies that were well done. So, what have we learned so far? Well, several different therapies seem to work reasonably well for tinnitus that comes from the neck. You may have noticed that trigger point therapy and stretching came out winners in both, um, both review studies. And that's not surprising since they reviewed many of the same studies. But even then, what does that give you to apply, or even doctors or, and therapists who treat tinnitus patients? Stretching where and how? Trigger point therapy where and how? So don't you know, I asked those questions. Now I'll share with you what I found as I went back into deeply analyze the original studies covering the last 20 years. This will not be the final answer, but it will be very good because I have found and stand on the shoulders of diligent, thoughtful, persistent practitioners and researchers and have shared, that have shared their experience in published research. As I analyzed these studies, I considered many characteristics. To make it simple, I look at what did they do exactly, did it work, 
specifically how well, how long did it take to start working, did the improvement last, how long, and how many people did you demonstrate this on? I don't care quite so much about if they had a control group to prove that it was not a placebo effect, especially if the participants had their tinnitus for years and the treatment was natural and safe. If you can get good results naturally and safely with people that have had tinnitus for years, I want that treatment in my tool bag. The study that started me on the path of somatic tinnitus treatment was done by two of the pioneers of this somatic tinnitus field, Rocha and Sanchez. The study on trigger point therapy and posture training um, did not share how much the patients improved, but they did say that it took five sessions to start improving and the improvements lasted two to three months after the end of 10 sessions in two thirds of the patients. The eight muscles they addressed were the infraspinatus, levator scapula, superior trapezius, splenius capitis, splenius cervicis, sternal portion of the sternocleidomastoid, superior, uh, superficial masseter, and anterior temporalis. Now let's dive right into another study, one that involved acupuncture and stretching in 2009. This study was to test acupuncture for tinnitus, treating only three times per week for three weeks on people who were diagnosed with somatic tinnitus. Uh, the diagnosis had unstated criteria. In addition to the nine acupuncture treatments on the ear, there were nine training sessions for 30 minutes each where multiple very specific 10 second muscle stretches, posture and relaxation techniques were taught and practiced. So they encouraged the participants to practice this posture and relaxation of the same muscles throughout each day. The stretches included shoulder, head and neck muscle stretches, specifically of the front part of the deltoid muscles, on the back of the neck, and the sternocleidomastoid, and resisted jaw muscle stretches with the technique called PNF. Treatment was pretty successful. There was an average 12.5 point annoyance reduction, that's 21% in this study, after just three weeks, which was the end of the treatment. There was slightly more improvement over the following three months after active treatment ended. Was it the stretching, the posture, the relaxing, the acupuncture, or was it the combination? And if it was, um, if stretching was helpful, was it stretching of the neck or the jaw that helped? It's hard to say from that study. Let's keep looking. Michaels did a review study we started with today. Um, she also did a treatment study published in 2016 with a different analysis of the same data published in 2017 called Prognostic Indicators for Decrease in Tinnitus Severity. So we've looked at this study in a previous video episode to know who would benefit from treatment 27% or more. But now we look at it to see what treatment worked. We need to remember that the number of people who improved 20, 27% or more on their TFI tinnitus questionnaire was small. It was seven out of the 38 people. But let's see what they did to help those people get better. It turns out this treatment for the 2016 and 2017 studies was from a 2002 study by Joel and Schrott for the treatment of headaches caused by neck problems. As a side note, this treatment applied to headaches was pretty effective. 76% of the participants improved by at least 50%. More than a third got completely well and everyone maintained their improvement for 12 months for their headaches. The treatment compared exercise with exercise plus spinal manipulation. The combination was a little better, about 10% better, but both were very good with three quarters of the participants getting at least 50% headache and neck pain improvements. The, exercise, the exercises that um, were borrowed for Michael's 2016-17 studies on tinnitus. So let's see what those exercises were. Here they are. They were very specific, slow, controlled, progressive, cranial, that's skull, cervical, neck, flexion exercises, all right? Scapular, that's shoulder blade, scapular adduction, that's bringing it close to the body or to the midline, plus retraction, bring it backwards, focusing particularly on the serratus anterior and lower trapezius, practiced twice daily. Both were held for endurance. Throughout the day, while sitting upright, with a natural curve in the lower back, 
these exercises were incorporated into postural training using adduction retraction of the scapula, which we talked about, with gentle elongation of the neck for the neck flexors. Also, lightly resisted rotation of the neck was added. And finally, stretches of the tight muscles were taught and encouraged. The active treatment lasted six weeks, included a minimum of eight and a maximum of 12 treatments. And we notice a key difference from the Michaels 2016 review and the acupuncture study, which highlighted the stretching. This, uh, this one uses strengthening exercises primarily in addition to stretching therapies. These studies promote what appear to be opposites, one stretching, the other strengthening. Now look more closely. These are the gems I work to bring to light in my videos and my tinnitus synergy program. The stretching was primarily of the posterior neck muscles and the anterior shoulder muscles. It turns out this involves much the same action as contracting the anterior neck muscles, hmm, interesting, and adducting and retracting the scapula, our shoulder blade. These opposite therapies that both work have, the similar, have a similar mechanism in the body. These are the details that large review studies just cannot pick up on. So this next study has results that are truly impressive, but it took lots of patience. In 2003, Bourne, I don't know how to say his name, it's B-J-O-R-N-E, published uh, this data with a focus on Meniere's, and in 2007, he published on the same data, focusing on the tinnitus improvements. This study took 24 patients with Meniere's disease. I may do a separate video on that, but for now, understand that it's just another condition with an unknown cause of tinnitus. Intensity of symptoms was measured using a visual analog scale for intensity of tinnitus before treatment, which is marked at C0, and at six half-year follow-ups, C1 through C6. Recognize those are not cervical spine levels, those are just the time markers they gave it. Um, so six half-year follow-ups after treatment of the TMJ and neck disorders. In this case, they treated TMJ and neck, so we can't tell for sure which it was. At the first six-month checkup, there was some pain reduction in the neck and shoulders, but tinnitus was just down 18%. Not too bad. At one year, all symptoms were significantly reduced, including tinnitus, down 51%. And at three years, now they weren't in active treatment that whole time, but they were, um, they were checked up on every six months and encouraged to continue doing their homework. Um, and at three years, um, significantly reduced, including tinnitus down 51% at one year, and at three years, it was down a whopping 77%. It was only one study, and it was a particular combination of symptoms, and there was no control group, except that these people already had their condition for an average of eight years. So with all that, we can't guarantee these results will apply elsewhere, but with those impressive results, considering how Meniere's typically gets worse over time, I want to listen carefully to what these researchers did to get 77% improvement. The details are too boring to explain here, but I'll share the summary of what I learned. This study teaches me several things, including the importance of persistence. Not surprisingly, like other successful approaches, this study applied several techniques for a synergistic effect, including trigger point therapy, stretching, relaxation, and posture training, specifically relaxation of the jaw muscles and stretching and relaxation of the suboccipital, posterior neck, and shoulder muscles. I think we've seen that before. A pattern has emerged here. So, what can we use now from these studies? Well, number one, trigger point therapy seems to be effective, especially when done well for at least five to 10 sessions. Stretching, number two, stretching, strengthening, and practicing posture throughout the day may be necessary for very good results. Number three, stretching and or postural exercises are effective, specifically stretches of the front of the chest and shoulders, the suboccipital area, and the posterior neck, specifically the upper trapezius and levator scapula muscles that attach the shoulder blade to the neck, or postural exercises that contract the opposite muscles. Number four, be consistent. 
practice, practicing these activities throughout the day, almost every day, is critical to your success. Number five, and be persistent. Certainly don't expect improvement before six weeks. If you know your condition is related to your neck, see my other videos for that answer, don't give up before you give it a year. I usually see good improvements in weeks with my protocols, but it seems that some people need to persist for a year before they can see dramatic results. Even so, you can expect gradual, consistent improvement along the way. What about future applications? Well, I'll be integrating more step-by-step -step video instruction, including the things we've covered today, carefully walking you through my full tinnitus energy program, which in addition to the CBT and auditory discrimination therapy, includes the trigger point therapy, stretching, strengthening, and posture training. Then we've been making it available on an app for those who want an extra helping hand to implement these techniques in a convenient way. And secondly, another thing we need to, uh, to see more of is education and professionals that these techniques are so helpful for so many people. One way that we hope to do that is by getting our app into the hands of many audiologists and ENTs. As we do that, we intend to be certifying each of them through a short educational program about the many solutions available to tinnitus sufferers. This persistent and consistent stretching, relaxation, and posture approach will certainly be included in that education. So stay tuned. For the next episode, I'll cover what's the best treatment for tinnitus from your TMJ or jaw muscles. The best way to stay connected to tinnitus research and therapy applications, as well as being notified of new therapies and video postings, is to subscribe to our email newsletter at tinnitussynergy.com. Thank you and may God bless you.